Open Interpreter is by far my favorite tool, while many other agentic frameworks and GitHub repositories are very exciting and seem to have a lot of potential, most of my tests in real life use cases didn't produce good results and these frameworks still need to improve a lot. While in opposing to this, Open Interpreter is, I consider like the most production ready framework, which can actually help me and actually helps me on a daily, on a daily basis with doing a lot of different stuff. A few days ago, I've shared a, a short video about Open Interpreter and what it exactly does. So I won't um, bore you with many information, but basically in a nutshell, it is a tool, GitHub repository, that allows you to use command line um, via the command line interface. You can actually um, connect to the OpenAI API code and just run stuff code locally. So Open Interpreter can analyze files on your computer. It can write files on your computer and it basically speeds up the process of generating code and testing code. Um, and what I like about it the most is the fact that it can also problem solve and fix errors while it is running. So you don't have to go back and forth copying code from somewhere into your Visual Studio uh, code editor and then doing iterations. You just, it's, it's almost, almost as quick and efficient as a set and forget. What I also love about Open Interpreter is the fact that it's very easy to install and get up and running. So basically you just do pip install open interpreter and you just run interpreter and you're good to go. Obviously I will share the link in to the GitHub repository, the show notes. And before I show you like a cool use case that I've used open interpreter today, and it was actually, it actually blew my mind how fast and efficient it was and how helpful it was. I want to share with you the fact that they have also a very good uh, Discord channel. I will also share the, the link in the show, in the episode notes, in the YouTube video notes. I'm used to saying episode notes because I also have a podcast, um, but I will share the link of the Discord channel in the video notes. And this is a very uh, helpful community, a lot of cool uh, use cases, a lot of interesting discussions, I just saw a guy that uploaded a, a very cool video in which he is using Open Interpreter in order to communicate with uh, physical um, items in the real world. So he placed um, and he placed some sort of a machine or a camera in his fridge and using the open like the Open AI um, visual. I forgot the words for some reason, but I won't edit this out. But basically, he's able to analyze stuff using OpenAI uh, vision, and he analyzes the amount of milk that he has left in the fridge, etc. Um, this is this is the link, by the way. Long story short, I highly recommend checking out this Discord channel. Now let me show you what I did. So what I did basically. Um, as you guys know or don't know, I uh, am launching a new product, which basically allows me to generate um, creatives, video creatives for people who are running video, like video ads at scale. So let's say you're spending 5K or 10K daily on Facebook or, or TikTok ads. I created a code that allows you to mix and match different parts of the video and it generates many variations of these videos. This is uh, not necessarily related to the topic of the video, but what I'm trying to achieve now is I'm trying to get this offer out there and reach to CMOs and CEOs of direct to consumer companies or agency owners and promote this product. Now, one of the ways that I'm trying to leverage is except of running automation on Facebook, in which I have videos about this in my series of, which is called automation in public, which probably most of you found very boring because it 
didn't <laughs> get a lot of views. I'm also running LinkedIn automations. I'm reaching out to CMOs, CEOs, and agency owners. And I also want to scale the cold email campaigns that I have. So what I did, I downloaded, I scraped and downloaded email list of different stores. And one of the best practices of writing cold email uh, at scale is personalizing or at least segmenting the list of the customers based on different uh, parameters. So this is where Open Interpreter came in uh, to assist me because what I wanted to achieve, I wanted to segment all, like I had a, a file, an Excel file of many prospects and I wanted to segment it. So let's say I have this list, as you can see, a list of many, many uh, e-commerce stores and we have many columns. So website, name, description, shop category, emails, additional emails, country, currency, estimated monthly sales, uh, which uh, tech stack they are using, is it a Shopify store, a Wix store, Magento, or whatever. So a lot of data. And assuming that I want to segment this list, which contains 2000 records into various lists based on the category, and then upload each category on its own and, and really write an email that is specific to the category. Now doing this manually, as you can see, there, are, there is a ton of shop categories over here. Doing this manually will take a lot of time. So obviously you can try to filter or create Excel macros um, to create like different sheets and we can use ChatGPT in order. ChatGPT can write for us these macros, which is cool, but still it will involve a lot of going back and forth um, saving different files, etc. So what I did instead, I used Open Interpreter, and let me show you uh, how exactly this went. So I just hit the interpreter minus uh, dash y, which allows you. I think it it's a it's the command that allows you to run code locally. Then uh, I added my API key from OpenAI. You can also run this locally, but I prefer uh, using OpenAI. Obviously, I will revoke um, the API key after the video. And basically what I asked it to do is, let me show you. And basically I asked it, I gave it a very simple, a very simple um, instructions. Create a folder. Uh, okay, can you help me with organizing the leads in this file? I gave him the path. Create a folder F leads and create an Excel file for each shop category. Each folder will have an Excel file that contains only leads from respective shop category. And from here on, it didn't do anything. So it is the response was, sure, I can help you with that. Here's the plan. Read the CSV file. Identify the unique shop categories in the CSV file. Create a new folder. For each unique shop category, create a new Excel file in the leads folder. The name of the Excel file uh, will be the name of the shop category and write the leads for each shop category to the respective Excel file. Let's start with the first step, which is to read the CSV file. So it uses the pandas library. It reads the, the file. This is the code that it, it wrote and it also executes the file. It executes the file locally, which is so amazing. And it also installs any libraries that I don't have. And it checks if we have the libraries. Now, great. Both Panda and OpenPyXL are installed. Now let's proceed to the first step of the plan, reading the CSV file. So it is reading uh, the CSV file. Here it encountered an error and it fixed the error so we said, apologies for the error, the display function is not available in the environment. Let's try again using the print function. It did this, and then it said, the CSV file has been successfully read. It appears to have 43 columns. However, we need to know the exact column names that contains the shop categories. Let's print all the column names to identify the correct ones. So it printed out all the column names and, and note here it has the shop category. Now it is smart enough to say 
the column that contains the shop categories is named shop categories. So I wrote it in, in uh, plural, but it understood it has to be singular, singular. So now let's identify the unique shop categories in the CSV file. We'll use the unique function in Pandas for this. So it identified all the unique categories. Went down and this all, everything was done without me interfering or, or providing advice or anything. So it identified all these categories. And it keeps scrolling down and this was very fast as well. Okay. Keep rolling down. Okay. Okay. So showing the last is now it shows like the last, uh, character. Now we have successfully successfully identified the unique shop categories in the CSV file. Now let's proceed to the next step of the plan, creating a new folder, which is what I requested. And then, um, in case it, let's keep, it had an error. It fixed the error. Now it created the folder. The folder has been successfully created. Now let's proceed to the next steps of the plan for each unique shop category, create a new Excel file in the leads folder and write the leads for each shop category to the respective Excel file. Due to the large number of unique shop categories, we'll do this for one category first to make sure everything is working correctly. Uh, it took this, uh, it saw so it, uh, it had an error, it fixed the error and eventually the operation has been completed for each shop category in the CSV file a new Excel file has been created in the leads folder. Each Excel file contains only the leads from the respective shop category. Please check the F leads file folder to the created Excel files and let me know if any questions, if any further assistance is needed. So basically we gave it an Excel. We asked it to create many Excel files, which in which each Excel file will contain only leads from the specific category. Now let's verify this. So we come here, F leads here. And as you can see, we have many Excel files and all the Excel files are based on the shop category. So adult apparel, adult apparel under Germans, adult antiques and collectibles, beauty, fitness, and face books and literature and so on and so on and so on. It created all these Excel files. And now like the, the last test that we will need to do is see if it actually placed the leads, the relevant leads in the Excel file. So let's randomly create, uh, open this uh, file. And as you can see, it took only the relevant files, only the relevant rows that are in this specific shop category and placed all of them over here. So this is pretty amazing. This is another example, only footwear, like only prospects that are all under the apparel and footwear category or in this file, which contains 46 uh, rows. Yeah. So this is amazing in my opinion, because it, allowed me to give it like only one very simplic simplistic instruction. It wasn't even detailed um, and I didn't even create the directory and didn't need to create any Excel file, no nothing. Everything was done after one prompt and I have everything sorted out nicely in my uh, local computer. And this was very fast and very effective. And now I can take all of these leads or at least decide which of these uh, lists I want to test first in my email campaigns, in my cold email campaigns. But this isn't like the, the focus for today because we're not talking about uh, cold emails today, but mainly showing you how powerful Open Interpreter is and the Possibilities are endless. You can ask Open Interpreter to do basically anything that you'd like. So the other day I showed you guys how I asked Open Interpreter to take 
a folder that had many files and just sort them out based on uh, their extension. So I had a ton of files that I downloaded and I wanted to sort them out based on like all the MP3s in one folder, all the MP4s in one folder, all the JPEGs in one folder. And also add dates or, or like any details that you would like to the file name. I gave it the prompt and it basically organized all my, I think it was my downloads folder. No, maybe my document. Yeah, all my document folder, it, uh, it organized like very fast all here all the txt files all the powerpoint files all the pngs so with one prompt it was able to sort out this whole documents um folder which was a, which was a complete mess so <laughs> this is amazing i love this tool i think at the moment it's the most production ready tool like the tool that actually over delivers while as i said before all the other agentic frameworks are very exciting, but still take a lot of time, a lot of fine tuning. They are very promising, but I wasn't able to leverage any of them to do something meaningful. In opposing to Open Interpreter, which helps me on a daily basis, and I really love this tool. That's it for today, guys. Let's go back to Open Interpreter, like a closure for the, for the video. Here you have more use cases, a demo. Yeah, I highly recommend that you check it out. If you have any questions regarding Open Interpreter or anything else, please leave them in the comment section below. Obviously, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, keep on automating.